friends, welcome back or welcome if you're new. My name is Emma and this is Emma's Cottage. In today's tutorial, we are going to go over how I created the templates or the designs for the mouse pads that we did in our last tutorial. So this is part two. Part one is where we actually sublimated on the mouse pads. There was two different kinds. Um, so if you're interested in viewing that tutorial, you can go ahead and click the link up above or it will be um, listed at the end of this video so that you can go back and see. Once you've learned how to design it, you can go and watch how you actually are going to apply the sublimation print onto a mouse pad. So without further ado, let me show you how I designed these. So you can see with this one here, um, one of the materials that we used, it was from rtssublimationblanks.com. It was like a faux leather. So I wanted to go with a leather look on that one to make it look like it was actually leather. The other one was more of a neoprene. And so we went with this look here. So we're gonna start with where I got my designs. And let me show you that now. So let's go ahead, I'm going to hide this one. To do that, I'm just gonna click on this. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna hide it just so that it's out of the way. And we're gonna work on recreating this one here. Um, in fact, I'm just going to scoot it over a tad. So where did I find this? I actually found this background at um, designbundles.net. You guys hear me talk about design bundles all the time. It is literally one of my favorite places to find designs for sublimation and really anything crafty. Um, this is what it looks like. You could look it up by clicking um, or looking up mouse pad PNG sublimation design, but I will make sure that I have a link to this in the comments below, just in case you're interested on how to find it. Um, you can also, you can see up here, you can search categories. We could go ahead and type in mouse pad um, and you could see tons of different, I mean, they have hundreds of different um, templates that you could use, but this is where I found this one. Now for the training, I'm going to show you, I've had a lot of people ask how to do this, so I figured I would show you this today. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize Cricut Design Space for a second, and I'm gonna click download again. I know I already downloaded it, but I wanna show you guys how to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click download again, and with my computer, it's gonna download up here in the top of my internet browser. What I do is I just grab it, and I'm going to drop it onto my desktop. Of course, you don't have to do that. You could always go click this file and then save it into a different file. But for the purposes of this training, I'm going to go ahead and just drop it there. Then what I would need to do is go back to my Cricut Design Space. You're not going to see this because it's going to be off screen, but I'm going to move this now to a different section of my screen. And I'm going to open Cricut Design Space. And now we would need to upload that into Cricut Design Space. So to do that, you would come over here, click this upload button. You can either upload the image, you would upload it here. You can either browse. If you click on this, it's gonna browse all of the files, which I put it on my desktop and you would just tell it to you know, browse the desktop and you would find it. Or my favorite thing to do, like I said, you can't see this on my screen, but if I um, scroll over, I'm gonna drag it so you can see me dragging it and I'm gonna drop it right in here. And that's that simple. Um, I typically, for the most part, I usually upload everything as a complex image. Sometimes I will do simple or moderately complex, but it totally depends on what I'm going for. You can see if I went with simple, you can see it mutes down those colors big time. So that's one of the biggest reasons why you would always have it come in as complex. Um, but if you were like do, to do like a cut image or something like that where you don't need all of the crazy different colors, you want it to simplify it down to maybe three different colors for a cut image, that's typically when you would want to go with simple. I'm going to go ahead and hit continue now. And now it's saying, okay, preview this cut image. Well, we know we're not going to cut this. We're just going to use this for designing purposes. So I'm not going to touch anything with this. I'm just going to click apply and continue. That's going to take us to the next screen and it's going to say, well, which one do you want? Do you want the cut image or do you want the print and cut? I definitely would want this print and cut because I don't want this background. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this one. You can see it now has a green box selected around it. If you wanted, you could rename it. You can see this where it says a two next to it. It's because I have already uploaded this into my download. So I'm going to go ahead um, or into my images. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit upload so you guys can see what happens next. 
And it's gonna open up into the next screen where you can see all of the different images that you've uploaded. So you can see I've uploaded images. Here's this other one here that I uploaded. But I would just go ahead and select this one and I'm gonna come down here to add to canvas. It's now going to bring it over. Of course, it brings it over super big. Not all images do that, but some do. And I'm gonna go ahead and just make it a little bit smaller. Now this is where you would want to go and measure your substrate. So in my case, this of course was a mouse pad. So when I went and measured it, I measured it a tad bigger than the size it actually was. And if I click on this one, you can see I measured it at point, or sorry, 8.88 .8 by 7.25. So I'm gonna go ahead, oh, look at that. How close, how did I do that, you guys? That was crazy. Did you, did you guys see that? Literally, I'm off by one point, <laughs> that's crazy. I'm gonna leave it just right there. Okay, next we have to come up with this middle section. And again, you guys, this was so, 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 so easy. That's why I love to show you guys these tips and tricks because sometimes you think, oh, I can't make that. You totally can. And there's a lot of different um, softwares out there that you can design in. I just prefer Cricut Design Space because it's what I've used for years and I'm used to it and I truly don't have the time to relearn something new. So that's why I'm still using it. Um, but they do have a new thing down here. It's called this monogram down here. I don't know how new, but at least within the last six months, I'd say. So we're gonna go ahead and click this monogram and it's gonna open up a new window. Now you can see I was playing in here earlier today, but all you would do is you'd come in here and you'd select your initials. Of course, mine is EH. And then you can go through and you can just keep selecting on all these different ones, all of these mon monograms that you could choose from. Well, you can see looking at this here that I used this one right there. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select that same one. Don't worry about the color because you can change that later. Um, but other, I just wanna show you really quick, if you go into botanical, I mean, look at all of these different super cute options if you wanted to do a monogram. So I'm gonna go back to decorative and I'm gonna select the one that I selected before. I'm gonna add it to canvas. Now you see that it comes over to the canvas and let's just try and make it similar to the same size as the other one, just so that you can see. Make it a little bit bigger here. How about right there? That's pretty darn close. Now, these are not exactly the same color, but let me show you. If we go up, it should remember the colors you used before. So we can see that more than likely this blue here is probably this blue. So we're gonna go ahead and select it. There you go. Now I love to show this example. See how this almost looks different? You can, you can see a black outline. Well, if I were to print this, I wouldn't want that black outline. I want it to look soft like this one. So the only thing you have to do is just select it. Right now you can see it under the operation, it says basic cut. We want to change that. Just come on down here to print then cut and voila, it's now a very soft blue and you don't have that black background that it did before. That is literally how simple this is. The only other thing I would do is I would select both by dragging and dropping, um, clicking and dragging over it, which is going to highlight both. You can see over here on the side. And all I'm gonna do is go to arrange. Nope, not arrange, I'm gonna do align. And I'm gonna align to, let's do center. Let's try center, center. We'll see what happens. Well, it's okay, but I feel like it went too far down. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab, um, I think this went to back. I wanna just grab my custom monogram and I'm just gonna use my mouse to kind of take it left or right, up or down of where I want it. I'm gonna eyeball this one. And what I'm trying to aim for is that this line here matches this line here. And there you go. I think it looks pretty darn good. Okay, so next we need to print this. And for those of you that have watched my previous tutorials, you know that I typically will go to Microsoft Word, take a screenshot of it, mirror it from my Word document, and then print it. But guess what? There is now an update within Cricut Design Space. They have finally been listening and I'm so excited that we can finally print bigger images um, under their print and cut option. So, for you to be able to do this, now again, I'm recording this in February um, of 2023. So you may be watching this a year from now and you're like, Emma, this is old news. Yeah, it probably is if it's a year from now, but as of right now, I'm super excited. So 
for you to be able to have this option, if you watch this tutorial in the next few weeks to months, you would need to go up here to these three different lines and you would wanna to go to your settings. And here under general, you wanna make sure that you are in the beta settings, not the live. Basically what this beta is, is anytime they're testing out new features, um, they allow you to play in beta so that if something doesn't work, you can provide them feedback before they push it over into the live. So I typically am always in beta mode. Um, some people like to only just, you know, play around in live mode, but I'm typically always in beta because I like to test out all the new features. So if you want to try this feature, as of right now, you have to be in the beta mode to be able to use this. So what do we do? We're, let's just go ahead and um, let's just delete this one or at least um, hide it so we can't see it. So this one that we have here, we want to print this, right? And we want to print it in, with this size. So what you would need to do over here on mouse pad, typically when you would hover over this, it would say, hey, this image, this image is too large for an eight and a half by 11. Um, and it usually would say, you know, the max size can be 6.75 by 9.25, or I can't remember what it was. Well, now you can either do auto resize image or you can change page page size. In my situation, I want to change the page size because if I did this auto size image, it's going to shrink my image so that it will fit in an eight and a half by an 11, whereas maybe I want it to fit on a larger sheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and do change page size. And this is where you would need to go and you're gonna need to change it. So let's try doing eight and a half by 14. Let's see if it'll allow us to do that. If I click on that, that is now miss or that um, important message is now gone, and we would now be able to go and print and cut this from Cricut Design Space. Now, what does that mean? All you would do is go click Make It. Oops, this is a this is a good example, you guys. I didn't have this attached, so let's go back. I'm gonna hit Cancel. I love it when I make mistakes so that you guys can see. So as of right now, these are not completely formed together. Oh, look at that. It decided to like unhide everything. Let's try this again. Didn't need that. Oh, what's my Cricut Design Space doing? Sometimes it gets a mind of its own. Here we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna hover over everything like we did before. And I think what I'm gonna do, I think if we hit the flatten button, sometimes I forget. Yep, when you flatten it, then you can do the print and cut option. See there, I'm gonna go ahead and hit make it. And now that won't move. See how it stays where it's supposed to be. So typically if you're doing a print and cut, you're printing it on a printer and then you're gonna put it on a mat and then the mat is gonna cut around the edges that you are asking for. In our case for sublimation, I don't need to cut it on my Cricut machine. I could just cut it with my scissors um, or a cutter. So what I would need to do here is it's saying print and cut. And we're like, yep, this is exactly how I want it. I do want my mirror turned on though. This needs to be backwards. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. Right here, it's, it's saying no device found because I don't have my device on, but it's okay. Cause all I need to do is send this to my printer. So I'm gonna hit send to printer. And then this is where you would go through and you're gonna pick your printer. So let's just say I was gonna do my Epson 15,000. I'm just gonna select that one. Now on something like this for sublimation, for this type of thing, I do not want my bleed on. Now there are lots of situations where you do want your bleed on. Like if you're making a sticker and things like that, then you would want your bleed on. But if I turned my bleed on, what that's going to mean is it's almost gonna like make all of these lines, it's just gonna make everything thicker, full of color. We don't need to do that on this type of an image. The other thing that you could do is use system dialog. So if you click, if you click this, it's going to open your dialog before you actually print in the next section. So let's go ahead and hit print. And it's gonna open up my printer dialog. I'm hoping it's gonna open my printer dialog. I don't have my printer plugged in right now because as most of you know, I am moving <laughs> and everything's packed away. 
Um, okay, here's, this is what we would do. So if it's 15,000 series, you'd click on this. And then if you go into your preferences, this is where you're gonna see that typical when you go to print from Microsoft Word. More options, if you didn't select your mirror image, then you would want to make sure you select it here. But because we did select our mirror image, we don't wanna select it, otherwise it's gonna come, back, come through in the correct direction. And then when you go to sublimate it, it's gonna be backwards. So those are your choices. You can either mirror it here or I'm gonna just cancel everything here, or you can mirror it in this stage here. So it says mirror on, we could just go turn this off. So right now it looks correct. You've got EH with the flowers on top, right side up. If I were to go to mirror it, now you can see that the, it completely opposites. So my E is backwards now, and that's the bottom. So again, typically I don't mirror from this part. I would go in, I'd click done. Um, it already thinks that I printed it, you guys but you could always go click to send to printer again. And then from your printer settings, again, from right here, you want to undo your bleed for this type of, of design. Make sure that you're selecting the correct printer and then your systems dialog, click print. And then from in there, that is where you can actually select the mirror image. That's my preference, but you guys can do whatever you'd like. Again, I'm just gonna click that, go to your preferences more options and click mirror print. Um, so pretty, pretty easy. I'm not gonna print it because those of you that watched me, you know that I already did that tutorial. And this tutorial is just to show you guys how I created the design. Um, and then in right here, this is just a quick tutorial on how you can actually print them now through um, the print then cut option through design space. Um, I do wanna show you, are you sure you wanna cancel the cut? Yes. I do wanna show you um, how I do it through Microsoft Word. And the reason for that, did I click the wrong button? Yeah, there we go. The reason for that is I don't know if I even want to use their print and cut setting because I truly am not cutting it with my cutting machine. So I'm gonna quickly show you how to do it if you guys have Microsoft Word or if you have another type of software that you can print from, this is how you would do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and open my Microsoft Word I'm gonna create a new document really quick, bring it over to the screen so that you guys can see it. What I do is I go to my layout first, I'm gonna to go to margins, and I'm gonna to go to custom margins. And you guys, this is the same steps every single time I print sublimation from a Word doc. I'm gonna go ahead and click zero tab, zero tab, zero tab, zero. The reason I do that is as of right now, you can see that the tabs, you have this whole section right here that's not gonna allow you to print. So we want it to go all the way over so that we have more printing surface. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay. It's gonna tell you, hey, you can't do that. And you're gonna say, okay, fix it for me. So it fixed it for you. It took it to a 0.12 all the way around. When I hit okay, you're gonna see this move over. Voila, now you have a lot more printing space. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my layout orientation from portrait to landscape. And then all I have to do at this point is go and click insert. And then we're going to do a screenshot right here and we're going to do screen clipping. And then all I have to do is as close as I can and it's totally fine if some of the white shows up, no big deal. I'm going to get as close as I can go all the way around this square that we've designed. And then once you do that, it automatically pulls it over into your Microsoft Word document. Now, right now I can't move this around and that just drives me nuts. So if you click on this little guy and then go to this middle section, then you can move it around wherever you want. Now let's keep in mind, what size was this supposed to be? Let's go back to our Cricut Design space. If you click on this, it's supposed to be eight by eight eight by eight, eight in width and 7.25 um, in height. So let's just go back over. And if I double click on this over here, your width is right here. So we're just gonna type in 8.88. When I hit the enter button, it automatically fills in the other section to offset it. It said 7.29, which is fine. It's close enough to 7.25, so I'm still happy with it. And at this point, you would go ahead and you would print this. 
Let me show you. Again, this should look exactly the same as if you were to do the print and cut, but instead I can print this on an eight and a half and 11. I don't have to print it on a legal document size. So if I went to file, print, again, I'm gonna select the printer that I'd be using. Let's just say it's this 15,000. Go to the printer properties. Oops, I think I clicked the wrong thing. That's a fax. You don't wanna fax it, you guys. We wanna print it. Printer properties. This is that same screen that we saw when we were doing it through Cricut Design Space. So we go ahead and click more options and then there's your more your mirror image. All right, now just so you guys know, I already have, um, have this set up. You can set up features. So just in case you guys wanna see, my features are, my mirror image is always on, my bio-directional printing is off, um, it's my color correction is custom and what you would do is go into advanced and I have color controls. I have color mode Adobe RGB with a gamma of 2.2. Then I've got my brightness at nine, contrast at seven, saturation at 15 and density at four. This printer I am currently using, um, this printer actually right now is my Epson ink. So it's my Epson sublimation ink. I have two different printers. I've got one with Epson sublimation ink and I've got one with Cosmos ink. So these are the settings I have for my Epson computer. So then all you'd have to do at this point is go ahead and print it. You've already selected this mirror image. So it's okay that it doesn't look mirrored because once you print it, it will print out mirrored. So that design is done. So let's go ahead and move on to the other design. I'm going to go ahead and just delete this one. The other design, I'm going to go ahead and and see it, there we go. So this is what we're going for here. And let me show you how I found it. I couldn't remember where I found this exact leather, but I know like a place where I could have found it. So I'm gonna show you that. I subscribe to PicMonkey. I believe that there is uh, free versions and versions that you can pay for. Uh, Canva is another one that's gonna have a lot of images and free versions that you could use. So I'm in PicMonkey here, you can see I just have a flat space design and I wanna go in and look for a background that looks like leather. So what I would do from PicMonkey is I'm gonna go ahead and click photos and video. I'm gonna go and click add photos or video and then I like to go to the stock photos. So with my membership, what I pay for is I pay for tons and tons and tons of stock photos. So any of those, these photos here I could use in my designs but I'm gonna go ahead and just type in a leather. I'm gonna help if I can spell. Background. And then voila, tons and tons of different leather backgrounds have popped up. So um, I wanna say it was probably this one that I used. So I'm just gonna select that and add image. And at first it's gonna come through a little fuzzy as it's downloading, but once it's all downloaded or uploaded, then it won't be so fuzzy. You can see there now it's not fuzzy. So at this point, um, what I did from here is I actually saved this. And to do that, so I didn't do anything special here. I just went and I clicked download. I always do PNG and I'm gonna click download. Again, it's gonna do it up here. I'm just gonna grab it and just, just for kicks and giggles, I did a 2000 by 2000. I'm gonna go ahead and drag that to my desktop. We're gonna close this out again. We're back in Cricut Design Space. We're gonna to go to Upload. We're gonna upload an image. Again, just like we did before, I could click this Browse button, but instead I'm just gonna drag it in from around here. It's saying, wow, that's large. I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm gonna go Complex and go to Continue. Now, could you do all of this within PicMonkey? Absolutely, you could. I'm just showing you how I like to design in Cricut Design Space. I'm gonna go ahead and click on these two white pieces because it just makes it come in a little bit more clear because we don't need that white. I'm gonna go ahead and apply and continue. Then you've got your print and cut here. That's the one we want. And again, you could rename it if you wanted. You could name this leather upload. Like if it's something that you're gonna be using often, then I typically will go ahead and name it. And you can even put tags in here so that if you were trying to search it, yeah, I told these, these do look different. I cannot remember where I found that one. So we're going to go ahead and click on this one. We're going to add it to canvas and it's going to come on over. Wow. This one's actually pretty. I almost think I like it better than the one I had before. 
Um, and this is where we want to adjust the sizing. So you, of course you want to measure your substrate to see what size you're gonna be using. I know that we wanted nine by 7.5. So I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna unlock this and then I'm gonna take this to nine. And then I'm gonna take this one to seven point, or was it five? I think that was right. Let's double check. Yes, yeah, 7.5 and nine. So these are now the same size if I were to put them over, okay? So then the next thing I did to get this BH, I did the same thing. I went over here to monogram and I'm gonna change this E to a B. And then now I have to figure out which one, I feel like it was the same one, this, this BH, that looks right. Um, oh, I remember what I did. I think I did do this exact same one. So let's just do add to canvas. Make it a little bit bigger so we can see it for a second. So if you look over here on the right hand side, you can see that this has two layers. So it's grouped together as one, but it has two layers. So I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna click ungroup. So now they are two totally separate layers and we don't want this one. So I'm just gonna hit my delete button or you could right click and delete. And now you're left with this one layer, right? So then what I did is I just brought it down. Now you easily could just change this color. You could change it to that color or a white, whatever color you wanted. Um, you could even do it as a print and cut so that it's soft, you know, and, and this is gonna print like this, it would print white. But you can see how mine's a little bit more faded. I believe what I did, again, it's been a few weeks since I did it, but I believe what I did is I grabbed this um, I want to say, yeah, I think it has to be a basic cut. So I'm going to change it back to a basic cut and now I'm going to grab both. You have to have both layers. So I'm grabbing the background leather and I'm grabbing this BH. So you've got two selected over here and then I just clicked slice. All right. So then you can see over here, we now have the slice result. So we're gonna go ahead and delete that. I'm just gonna click delete on my keyboard. And then I'm gonna delete it again. And there you go. You're left with basically a background that has a cut of the engravings that you wanted in it. So that is how I created that one. Um, I guess we could even take a little bit more time. And as you can see, that's how you know that it's a cut. Because when I hover over it, it disappears, right? Let's just, for kicks and giggles, let's go to images. Now I do have a monthly subscription that I pay for Cricut Design Space. So if you don't have a subscription, you may not be able to see all of the things that I see. But I'm gonna go ahead and type in leather. Um, maybe we'll just type in leather for now. Let's type in image. Oh, look, you can see this right here. It says uploaded. That's because that's the one I uploaded. But we could go down and just see, do they have any leather backgrounds that we could have used? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Let's maybe even try and type in leather background just to see. Well, still just the two pop up for me. Yeah, it doesn't look like Cricut, the Cricut Design Space as of today at least. Doesn't look like they have an image that would have worked for this. So that is definitely why you would more than likely want to use a different program to find the background that you're looking for if you can't find it. Another way, let me show you one more tip and trick. If we go to shapes and let's just select a square um, and let's go ahead and just make it, let's just try and bring it to about here. Okay. If you go up here and you change it from a basic cut, go take it to a print then cut. We do have some options. If you just hover over the color, select it, change from the print type, change it from color to pattern. You now have a ton of different patterns and you may be able to find one that looks like wood. So one thing you could do is you could do filter and let's just filter all of the patterns that are brown. And one thing I do wish is I wish that we could make this bigger, but you really, you can't make it any bigger, unfortunately. Oops, sorry you guys, I just went out of what we were doing. Let's try this again. Brown. And then just scroll down until you find one that possibly looks like leather. What about that one? Nope, that looks like clouds. <laughs> but anyways, 
Oh, you guys, I'm sorry. It looks like I lost internet connection. That is one thing I will say that I don't like about Cricut Design Space because you have to be connected to the internet to make it work. But at least you can see that's what would happen. Here's another thing I wanted to show you. Um, let me go back to the shape. Here's a shape. So see how there's this line here? It's because I made the image too big. So let me go back to this image. I'm gonna make it just to right there. Go back to print then cut. And then let's go to patterns again. Let's go to filter, let's find brown again. And let's see if we can find something that might resemble leather. We may be out of luck. They may not have something. Uh, no, I'm not really seeing anything that looks like leather, you guys. But there is a whole bunch of different backgrounds. Let's maybe unselect this and look at all the different backgrounds of things that you could use. If, if um, you just want to come in here and try and be creative, let's say you wanted to use this background. There you go. Look how cute that is. And then that's when you would size it bigger. And you could do a monogram. Let's just say we're doing somebody, I don't know, with a CH. Change it to CH. You could go to botanical. Um, look how cute that is. Let's just add that to canvas. There you go. Make it a little bit smaller, possibly. Maybe change it from a print and cut to, uh, sorry, from a basic to a print and cut to make it softer. There you go, it's a little bit softer looking. And look how fast we just created our own template. As always, you guys, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you here in the next few weeks when I do another project. Bye, guys. Bye.